two, one, and we're recording. Okay, excellent. So I'm with with Kathy. How are you, Kathy? I'm awesome, thank you. How are you? Excellent. I am well. I'm well. So thanks for being with me today. Um, you know, just to as a level set, I usually kind of start with. Uh, where did we first meet? So just as a, you know, so, so people know, I guess this is our first time technically, you know, connecting. Uh, I had, I guess, just randomly pinged you on Twitter. I, again, I explained earlier, but I went down this deep rabbit hole in search of, search of what? In search of freedom, right? So I, I talk about Bitcoin on my show a lot. You know, I, I, I spent almost 10 years in this space and, and I consider Bitcoiners as like, you know, freedom fighters in many ways. And so, uh, so, so more recently, you know, I've been thinking more about, I don't think about politics much. I think about ones and zeros and, you know, and math and building businesses. Um, but lately I've been thinking more about, you know, geopolitics and things like, uh, you know, the physical world, <laughs> like the place we live in and, and kind of asking questions around what is happening. And, and like I said, one thing led to another, I, I, I again, I'm not a very political person, um, but, you know, someone said something recently that, that kind of resonated, which is that if you just say that, um, it's, it's not enough because you, you have to stand up as well for what you believe in. Because if you think you're just going to carve your own little space out in the world, that's not going to work because they're going to take it all. So that got me to learning about you. And like I said, Twitter and the Wild Rose Party and Alberta. And, and I think people know that I'm, a lot of people know that I'm from Edmonton originally. And so, you know, my family, a lot of people like that probably watch this are from there as well. So, so curious. So that, so that's kind of, you know, the level set. Um, you know, my, my first real question is, is like, what's your story? Um, yeah. What's your story? Like, what's the long version of it, if you will? <laughs> the long version, it's not actually that long. I'm, I'm an Alberta girl, born and raised, um, Northern Alberta. It's, it's all I know. It's what I love. Although the older I get, the, the harder these winters are on these old bones. And so um, my husband and I, we, we, we were finally ready to kind of to kind of have that dream. And um, our kids are, are grown. They're gone. They're, we've got grandbaby now. And so it was like, okay, what, what are we going to do? And, and so we had, we had one business already. He worked in oil and gas um, up until just a couple of years ago. And then we were like, hey, maybe it's time to get another business going. It looks like we're sort of getting out of this recession that we're in. Let's see what we can do. And um, the plan was to winter somewhere that was warm and then come back and enjoy the kids when it was a little warmer and, and able to do that. And um, the politically motivated, I don't care what anybody says, politically motivated recession that Alberta was under for five years over the last 12 months has now turned into a politically motivated depression. And so myself, like many other Albertans, our dreams are gone. It's like it's, you get up, you go to work and you're not really sure why, because that's not going to turn into something that that you built or that you made or that you're going to be able to look back on and say wow like look what i did and now i can leave that to my kids and um and, and in alberta there's a, there's a there's a different culture here we are we are a freedom loving people we we don't we're not cool with being told what to do and how to do it um we're not not at all happy when people get in our way from from us wanting to be everything that we can be and uh, we definitely, you know, we never had a problem sharing our, our success and our wealth with the rest of Canada, but then that didn't get reciprocated back when we were in need. And so it was just, it was really time to do something. And um, my, my husband and I together, like we weren't sure what that was supposed to be, having never been involved in politics before. I always voted, I've always tried to, to do my best to be an educated voter. Um, I'm not real. I'm not a fan of somebody who just walks in and checks a box. Like, it's important. You need to know. You need to know what you're talking about before you get in there. And um, it was just, yeah. We looked. You know, I, I held my little grandson for the first time, and then I thought, I can't run away. I can't just leave. Like, we've got more generations coming up after us. So we rolled up our sleeves and decided to see what we could do. And all roads ended up leading to the Wild Rose Independence Party that I'm involved in now. And just as you mentioned with, with Bitcoin, that freedom fighter kind of thing, you know, um, that's really what we're about to. 
is, is about Albertans being able to enjoy that freedom to be everything we know we can be to reach, reach those goals, reach those levels of success and, and not be hindered in it and, and to help one another get there um, at the same time. So it does, it, it kind of sort of is a quasi Bitcoin story, if you will, that we just want control. We just, we just want to be able to be in control of our own future. Hey, you, Kathy, have you, I agree, I agree. Have you, have you read much about, and by the way, I'm not going to try and pretend like I'm sort of historian, right? Because I, this is more like literally the function of a few like Google searches recently, but have you read much about like the history of Alberta? It's fascinating. It is fascinating. Fort Edmonton and things like that were more just like places you would go visit as kids. But like as an adult, like learning about that stuff was was a bit mind blowing for me. I, I don't know. Are you able to share a little bit you, like in terms of kind of the TLDR of, of like kind of um, like, you know, at least what I gathered from it is it, like you're not just talking about what how people feel today. But this almost seems like um, like Alberta has this this history of, of people pioneering and being very um, independent and like, you know, even little things like, you know, PST, for example, like, you know, every, every province I think has some sort of provincial tax, Alberta doesn't. Alberta, um, you know, I don't think it would be a stretch to say that it has been essentially the economic engine of Canada. Um, you know, if you look at like the amount of wealth that the that, that the province has created and and look I'll, okay I'll say well I'll say one thing so, so I mean for what it's worth you know um I think the environmental movement has gone a bit far I think there's this uh, this rhetoric around um we need to like kill the oil industry is like like look I, I drive a Tesla I, I I actually my first job was in the clean energy sector okay mm -hmm. my name's Sunny Ray like I should be running a solar panel company or something so I got no beef against green energy okay um you know minus the the ones that froze over down in Texas uh, last week <laughs> we won't mention those um but 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 my dad you know <laughs> spent his whole career uh in the oil industry and I know a little bit about it enough to know that oil is not going anywhere. Um, not in our lifetime, not in our kids' lifetime. I mean, and even if, let's just say in some world where every car was a, like, you know, electric car, like there's so many things that you need to even build a car with to make it run that, that, that is made out of oil and the things that are run our lives, right? So, so I, and, and so I, I find it a bit, um, I don't know, offensive, I guess, that, that there's this like, you know, this, this kind of war on Alberta. So I'll say that much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's exactly that's exactly what it is it's a war on alberta and you know none of us here are against clean energy either mm. that's the thing we're not against that but uh, quantify clean and mm. that's 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 the crux of it right there nobody bothers to take the time to find out what actually goes on in our plants, in our oil plants, and in our gas plants around here. It is clean. It is clean. Canada as a whole, and so particularly Alberta, because we're, we're the second or the third largest oil reserves right here. Um, I think we're the third. But anyways, we contribute like less than 1% of all greenhouse gases in the whole globe. And you're telling me that's not clean? Like, that's crazy. Yeah. That's, that's clean. Well, and then other things are like, why would you, I mean, and let's say you say you had, if you don't get it from Canada, are you going to ship it in from like some country like Venezuela or what? You like, is it like you, you, first of all, there's costs of shipping and then there's national security questions and et cetera, et cetera. Like, we should be producing our oil, own oil, um, obviously, and supporting that industry. Um, I, I actually, I don't want to take this off on a tangent. I want to go back to your story, but I did, I recently, yes, yesterday, I interviewed uh, a guy that works for a company based out of Alberta called mm -hmm. Upstream Data. And mm -hmm. what they do, it's like the most insanely fascinating thing. They, they go to, you know, wherever there's these like kind of like offsite locations where people are taking oil out of the ground, um, they often have uh, gas that comes out as well. And it's not financially feasible to run pipelines uh, to get that gas to, you know, to some usable uh, place. So usually they flare it. And now with the government also introducing carbon tax, this, that, it becomes like, like not a good thing. But upstream data, they've developed these like these little, you know, 
warehouse metal looking things that they go and put right beside these units that inside they have a generator they have a bitcoin miner and what they can do is they can essentially take this natural gas and and mine bitcoin out of it and and they go from having to potentially give money to the government to like it's insanely efficient and they make so much money on it. It's like, everyone's going to do it. And, and, and this is what I mean is, is that I, I, this is, you know, you asked me before, you're like, well, wh- why are we doing this call type? Like, what are you, what are you tra- looking out of it? Are you looking to get out of it. I don't know exactly, but I do know that guys like Steve that are building companies like upstream data, people like you, there are, there's something happening or at least I feel like there's something happening and, 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 and uh, freedom loving people are, are coming together. So anyway, so back to your back to your story. So fascinating. So you guys said you're not gonna go, you're gonna fight. So curious, yeah. what what is this? What is the Wild Rose Party? Or before we even get there, like, is there anything else you want to share on your story in terms of you know anything else? Like, um, yeah, I mean, it sounds fascinating. You guys said you re- you guys run businesses. You said oil and gas. Um, but anything else before we move on to the the party stuff? Sure. Well, you mentioned the history of Alberta, right? And yeah, it's please. Really rich and it's diverse and it's um, Alberta became a province in 1905. And almost all of the other provinces, except for two, us mm. and Saskatchewan, actually negotiated their way into the country. We were literally colonized. We were like, no, yeah, we are afraid of losing BC to the US. So this little chunk that's Alberta and Saskatchewan, we're going to take those into confederation now and just colonize them. You're going to do things the way we tell you to. And um, by the way, those two pieces of land are a little bit too big for our liking because we don't ever want you to have a population base that's bigger than Quebec or Ontario. So that's why there's this nice, beautiful line right down the middle of Alberta and Saskatchewan so that we would never, ever, ever have enough seats in the House of Commons to have any pull. And and this is the stuff that people don't understand. They don't know that this happened. And the reason why is because everybody in Alberta, with very few exceptions, came from somewhere else. And they came here for freedom. And, and my family is no different. On my dad's side, they came, they came from, from the Ukraine. And they were trying to, they, and thank goodness they did, or they had died there from their own leader killing everybody off through starvation, right? So they came on this boat, this family with little kids, not even knowing the land, show up and come here and, okay, well, there's a chunk of land, have fun with that. And by the way, uh, we can't pronounce your Ukrainian name. So here's your English ones. And that's what you're going with. Like it was just, it, it was, it, if we tried to get away with that today, it just wouldn't happen. The way that, that those early settlers were, were treated, no matter where they came from. And predominantly, the people who came and settled here were actually from the U.S., which is why it's often it's often said that we have more in common with our neighbors to the south than we do our own country, which would make sense because that's who kind of made up Alberta. And then we've just kind of been this hotbed of people coming from all over. And here we are today. And it's people who came here to be free and to be able to live their dreams and do the things they want to do. Is that is that kind of what describes why there's like this strong, um, you know, like in Calgary, for example, specifically, there's a very strong cowboy culture and you kind of you kind of sense that, you know, freedom, right? Like it's just kind of an embedded in, in, in the country, in the, in the province. Um, but that's fascinating. Hey, do you know much about like, um, OK, so that, that that's very, very interesting. And I, and I think Alberta it truly is. It's not just like, you know, natural resource rich. I mean, it's just so, so beautiful. Like when you see like when you. If anyone's who's seen Banff or Jasper or any of these, like, like you can't even describe it. And there's literally like, you know, almost nowhere on earth that that's that kind of beauty exists. And and um, so so okay, so I guess to 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 just so the pioneering element of it, you know, I I I've been reading more about it, um, and and I think it's very interesting. So I but I did not know that that was that we were that Alberta was was colonized actually. So so um so I, I was going to ask you. So do you know much about what kind of happened with um because you know how like Quebec was always trying to separate for like the longest time. Because I, I I read recently that because of some development that happened with the parliament or with the government, there's now this like doorway I guess open towards. 
uh, I guess like, can you bring us to like today? So like, what does it look like? And I, I, I mean, I definitely can sense that there's like this strong sentiment amongst Albertans. Cause like I said, most of my family and friends and I kind of get it. Like I'm, even though I'm not there right now, like I can feel it. And, um, and so, so what, yeah, what does that look like? Like what, how are, yeah, if you can talk about like what, what the situation is today and kind of what are people thinking in terms of like, how do they get back to being free? Sure. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to get back to being free. I think we're going to get it for the first time. <laughs> Good <Honestly>. point. <laughs> so, and, and, that's, and that's what we're fighting for is, is to have that freedom for the first time. But to, to answer your question about Quebec wanting to separate, yeah, they, they did. And, and it got pretty contentious there for a little while when, when that was going on. And, and that's a history all on its own. But what, what happened at that time was there was this thing created called the, the Clarity Act. And it's actually anything but clear, but this is what they called it, was the Clarity Act. And, and so within that is the parameters of what, what the government says has to happen in order for any province to secede or to remove themselves to become independent from confederation. And uh, the, the challenge of that Clarity Act is within it kind of makes it impossible in some people's eyes for a little province like Alberta to be able to accomplish it within those parameters that they give. So for example, um, you have to come up with a, with a referendum question and then you have to submit that question. Uh, eventually it gets submitted to, to the House of Commons in Ottawa. And then they decide whether that question is okay or not. So then once you've passed that, then you go, okay, well, here's what we think a majority is going to be. So we're gonna put the referendum out and we say that a majority is 70%, which I think is really fair. Like if 70% of your population is voting to secede from the rest of Canada, that's a pretty solid majority. But the House of Commons can say, no, that's not good enough. We want it 98%. They have, like they could do that if they wanted to. And then on top of that, seven of the provinces and 50% of the population represented has to also vote in favor of that province leaving. So when you're talking about Alberta, who is, you said it earlier, we are the economic engine. Even in a depression, we are still the economic engine of this country which is why a lot of us are really pissed off because we're quite done with money being taken out of our pockets that's hardly even there. Um, there's a lot of these challenges to get through in order to make it happen. And so it doesn't make it impossible. It just might mean we have to make, take some more uh, creative measures to get the job done. And Alberta's pretty good at doing that because We've been creative ever since 1905. That's why we have oil and gas, because people were creative to think about how to do this. And we got some stuff wrong along the way. And now, now we're doing it amazingly. And <coughs> anything that we ever put our hands to, um, we figure out a way to get the job done. And this won't be any different. So, so just, just, so just to be clear, so what, okay, what are we talking about here, though? So, okay, so the, you're telling me that, okay, and by the way, you said something, I think, on the phone that kind of blew my mind about, okay, we haven't even really talked about Wild Rose yet, right? But uh, when, when's, when would be a good time to switch gears into, into kind of that conversation? But, but I, I wanted to make sure first that we got kind of like your story and all that. And, and if there's any other thoughts you had around, I don't know, like the pioneering nature of like Albertans and that, that I didn't know that. So so you're, you said your father was one of the first people to, to come to Alberta or, or was it? My sorry? Grandma. Your grand? Yeah. Your grandmother? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's cool. You know, on that note, I wanted to ask you something. Um, like when I say that I've been reading about the history of Alberta and Canada, like more as like through the lens of an adult, I've been reading about the history of, of Canada, right? Like, they, like Canada hasn't been around just for 100, 150 years. It's been around for far longer than that, right? And there's been people here that have been far here far longer than that and yeah. to shame on me to not even really learn or pay attention to the fact that um that there's close to five percent of the canadian population represents these people um i'm curious so in this pursuit of freedom is it in alignment with all humans <laughs> this <sighs> 
well, I, I don't know. I'm just curious. Or is this like another conversation? Maybe we should leave for part two. <laughs> but I mean, if, you, if you're talking about the people in Alberta, and, and perhaps that is a really good segue into, into the Wild Rose Party and what we do. Um, Please. Yeah. It, it's, there is a, a and, I, and I think that if I recall what in our conversation the other day, your, your mind blowing moment was when I said, that yes, the Wild Rose Independence Party did rank 10% in a poll as far as you know who do, who do you kind of believe in to get the job done with regards to Alberta politically. And, and that's true, we did go at 10%, which is not bad. Um, however, when because we're, we're a party that literally was born last summer, like we're brand new. We haven't been around for very long. So 10% in less than a year, that's pretty impressive. Um, but, but larger than that, there was another poll that was done in Alberta, and this one didn't ask you if you about political parties or even identifying with one. It actually asked if you were um, open to the idea of Alberta seceding from Canada. And in that one, 40% of Albertans were open or had already decided they were ready to go. And so that's the number. So, uh, you know, uh, um, is this is this human nature? I think so. You know, we, we don't like being as people as as human beings, we don't like being backed into corners. Like, we just we don't do well, we, we want to thrive. That's how that's how we're designed. That's how we're made. And so we're seeing a population in Alberta, um, being able to go, yeah, what if we were free? What if we were able to do all of these things? And so that was the culmination of this of this political party because what what's kind of confusing about the whole thing is you we have to use the the, the political um, vehicle that's here that we're stuck in that we're not free we've got to use that exact same political vehicle to get out and to be free and to get to the other side and and so that's what this party is all about and it's about putting Albertans first 100% first so. And, and the best way I can describe that is that what what we're our mandate as a party, what, what we've said we're going to do is is everything that we can take control of within the parameters of confederation, we will. And so that's CPP, that's well, whatever we're gonna call it, but right now it's CP, the pension plan, it's employment, um, insurance, it's our own police force, um, uh, you know, all of that kind of stuff uh, like that, um, tax collection to a certain degree that we're able to do. And then once we've got all of that in house, there's really just one last decision to be made. And that is, are we happy with these equalization payments that we're still making? $4,000 per person is what I read. <laughs> Five. 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 dollars per person. That's insane. Whether they work or not. And I read about that. I couldn't even believe it. It was just like, wait, that, that, I, people, what? <laughs> Five grand person that's four and a half million people that's diapers to depend five grand per person so then we go back and say are you still content with doing that and then that's when Albertans decide yes or no and if they say no we're not we're ready to to do this on our own we're we're going to go for it then we go through the motions of seceding from the rest of Canada well, you're telling me you're telling me there's a future in which there's even a chance that Alberta could become its own country and like write its own constitution and and actually um, you know enjoy the fruits of like being free people. Which I, I mean, I'd be hard pressed to find another place uh, on earth that that can even come close to saying that right now. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It it it's it's literally happening. It's literally happening. Got to pack my bags. Uh, okay, so what? So what is the Wild Rose Party? What? It, what's? Uh, what's? What is the kind of the? I don't know. I mean, is it a new party? Has it been around for a long time? Like, is it? So you said it's. It's man. It goal is to like. I like that. It's. It's working within the system to help us. You know, get out. Okay. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but I mean, okay, so there are these, there seems like there's a lot of potential interest maybe on the ground, I mean, 30, 40%, whatever. I mean, that's massive. Right. Um, but like, I have a question if everything went well, like, and everything went like best case scenario, when could this even happen? Like, are we talking 10 years from now? We're talking like 
two years from now? Is it like, yeah, well, or is it too far to even imagine? I mean, <laughs> oh no, oh no, it's it's definitely within our lifetime. Um, estimates right now. Well, our next provincial election is in two years, right? It's in twenty twenty three. So then we'll be ready for that. And and the plan is we will take government, and um, and then and then the clock starts. Because now we're in government and we're able to, to get things going, to get things moving. And it's it's possible in a perfect, like if everything goes the way we we know that it can and we think that it should, we're looking at five to seven years once we get once we get in. So what are we at? Nine, nine years tops. Nine, ten years. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Interesting. Interesting. And and I guess it would so for for I'm sure a lot of people, at least in my circle, they're, if they're watching this, they're probably learning about some of this for the first time, right? Because it's kind of like black and white, like, you know, whenever it comes to government stuff and when people think about voting. But um, but I guess, yeah, I'm just curious. Like, so how, like, I mean, what, how do, how do you, how do you, how do you kind of explain the, like kind of the role of the party and, you know, and how it, so it's, it's about, I guess, obviously preserving freedom. So it's, it's about, you know about essentially breaking Canada off what are the biggest I don't know kind of like fears or or like things that you get people to say like as like a complaint like oh like could you imagine like it do well yeah is it like security usually like how do we protect ourselves or what are the big kind of you know big things that usually come up yeah that sometimes that's one um people say well you know what kind of a military would we have or what kind of police force would we have and and that's that's pretty easy to answer. I mean, every country has a military, so can we. <laughs> that's not tough. Mm. Um, and, but really, the biggest question we get, and and I just answered it this morning too to somebody who had called me, is the landlocked question. Mm, yeah. Okay. Right. We don't, and that's that's always the biggest, biggest one when we talk about this. And this is the one that um that the federal government likes to toss our way to oh well you can't do this because you're landlocked and that's when most of us look back and say yeah well we're landlocked now because our own country did it to us our own country landlocked us so we actually unlock ourselves as a province become nation so we can get our stuff out so we can get our product out um so that's always the biggest one and people don't really quite understand well how can that be because nothing has changed right um unless some of bc comes with us or we take saskatchewan and part of manitoba and then go out that way like there's all these questions but the fact of the matter is um bc has a big 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 port and that big big port is over a trillion dollars a year in business coming in and out that goes to the rest of canada well what province does that good have to go through to get to the rest of Canada? So if you want to play nice, guess what? We need a pipeline that goes out as well so we can get our product to market. So suddenly we've got we've got leverage. Now we've got negotiating power because if you want to get through with us and you want us to buy your products as well, you want me to buy your oranges, which I'd be delighted to, um, well then, let's let's talk. Let's figure this out. How are you going to help us get our stuff out? And we don't we don't have that negotiating power right now because Ottawa, and I don't like to say Ontario because the people of Ontario are by and large very very supportive of us. Um, but but Ottawa, the, the the government structure is not. So that's that's the biggest that's the biggest hurdle that that people think will have to come over. But I. It actually isn't once you break it down. But there is, like I was saying, is is that well, I mean, again, I don't know too much about it, but I, I felt like there's some sort of path now. It felt like uh, at least with some of the recent developments, and then there's also this other party um, called the Maverick, and I think they're trying to do something similar but different. In fact, that's how I eventually kind of learned about the Waros Party. But but is, so is Maverick is they're trying to break away, but it's everything west of Ontario. Is that correct? Well, so Maverick is a federal party, right? Yes. We're provincial, mm. Maverick is federal. So, and, and it's not like, this is where people get confused too. So the NDP party, for example, they've got all of their provincial parties and then they've got their federal party and they're joined, right? NDP and the NDP federal and provincial, they kind of work together and they're joined together. Um, conservative party, 
federally and all of the conservative parties provincially are all connected in some way, shape or form. We are not connected with Maverick Party. We are right. our own entity, Maverick is their own entity. Now it doesn't mean we don't agree with each other's policies or, or anything like that, but they're two separate levels of government. But if Maverick were to succeed in their, whatever they're trying to do, would Alberta's, uh, I mean, sorry, would the Wild Roses party be more, like, would it be more capable of doing so? Because now it wouldn't have to fight with, like you said, Ottawa, it would be more like this new conglomerate of, you know, provinces coming together? Um, Or is it something that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, what has to happen there is every province would have to secede individually. So we all have to become independent independently. And then after that, we can decide kind of what we want to do. If, if, if BC, BC is going to be funny because I think they're going to have to separate themselves like geographically as a province first before central and northern BC can get free because southern, southern BC is a little bit nuts. But anyway, um, so yeah, so we all have to separate individually before we can decide how we want to work together as a block. Um, if the Maverick Party is successful and they've got seats and, and they and they get into the House of Commons, that's great. That means we've got allies in there. Mm. But it doesn't stop us from our mission. Got it. Got it. And so this mission, what does it look like? Like, I mean, like I said, I'm 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 like an entrepreneur, engineer. Like I I'm not, I'm really like this is probably the first person that I'm even like interviewing that's kind of like more political, but you're yeah. mo- almost not, right? Like you're like the opposite of political. <laughs> Um, which I love, right? Because, but, 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 but that's, uh, but I'm just curious. Yeah. What, uh, sorry, maybe I kind of, <laughs> didn't, didn't, I kind of lost my question there, but, um, but no, I'm just curious, curious about like, what can people do? Like if someone hears this, like, I think one of the things you told me on the phone was like, well, you know, you might want to share with your friends and family, at least, um, you know, what, uh, the party is about and that it's, and that they're, that it's even possible. And, Again, I, I'm, I'm asking about like these, you know, frequently asked questions because I'm sure, you know, because these are the things that people are going to be like, oh, it's not possible. Like, come on, we need a military. It's like, so how hard is it to build a military? If you got the money, um, you know, if you've got resources and the, the ability to anyways, so you get you get where I'm going. Um, so, yeah, but I think I think people it's kind of hard, right, um, to, to kind of get our head around. So, so yeah, what kind of things can people do? Like, did they just go to the website, I guess, and they can learn more about it there. And are there like forums or like, cause now with this whole, you know, this whole um, like pandemic and everything, right? Like, I'm just wondering, like, are, are, is there like a community or something where people connect? Yeah, well, it's funny actually, because when the pandemic hit, we were, we were a little bit concerned because we thought, oh no, like now, how are we, how are we going to tell people that we're here? How are we going to get our words out? Like, how are we going to educate the population? And um, it hasn't slowed us down. It's like, it's really, there's such an appetite for this. It has, it's actually gone up. Like I bet, I bet. Well, it's like Bitcoin. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, and it probably is kind of like Bitcoin because Bitcoin at first, like, it was new and nobody like, what do you mean? I'm not going to have paper money and it's not going to be attached to my card and it's not going to go in my bank. And how does all of this work? And so there's, you know, there's those people that are not sure you've got the early adopters who are like, yeah, let's go, you know, the the entrepreneurs who are, you know, get in, get messy, figure it out. But then you've got those folks that kind of sit back and they let other people figure it out for them first. And then they kind of pop in and that's what Bitcoin saw, right? Once, once people began to be able to wrap their heads around it, you guys went up like this. And I mean, other than a couple of blips, that hasn't stopped. Well, it's kind of the same with this independence movement. It's actually not new. This independence movement has been around a very long time. And so we've been able to, through our website, so wildrose.party, super easy to remember, wildrose.party, that's it, been able to, to communicate with people. Here's our bylaws, here's our policies, here's who our board is. And then our interim leader on on social media, on Facebook and on Twitter, has been doing a fantastic job of of helping Albertans and and anybody who wants to tune into his Facebook lives that he does, um, find out like, what is going on in our heads? Why are we thinking like this? What's what's wrong with those crazy Albertans over there that they want to leave this beautiful country? Like why? And and so those those places are, are where to go to kind of 
to find out here's here's why here's what's going on here's what we're thinking here are the challenges that are coming but here's how we're going to face face them head on and get through to the other side so those are the those are the two spots to go right now is yeah our website and um and facebook and paul hinman go check out paul hinman on facebook Interesting. <clears throat> Interesting. And, and as as a provincial party, is it more challenging to do this because it's not <clears throat> like in terms of like your influence on like Ottawa or whatever, or or how, like or is it is it essentially in the hands of Albertans in terms of you know like in terms of whether this happens or not? It's totally like I guess what I'm wondering is like does does like someone in Ottawa have to finally say yes, <clears throat> or is the pathway is it just like will that essentially? Uh, is just holding people back from making this happen. You know, what I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people believe that Ottawa has to have the final say. Um, but we, if you look back through history at any any place, any province, any state, um, any group of people, when they set their minds to becoming independent and being their own, they make it happen. Right. Right. And so that, that won't be any different here. It won't be any different here. Some people are a little bit concerned, um, you know, how messy is it gonna be? What's it going to look like? I don't have the answers to those questions. I, I hope it's amicable. I really do. I, I hope beyond hope that, that whoever is in, in government and in office in, in Ottawa at the time just is, is cool with saying, yep, no problem, Alberta, thin a slice off you go if that doesn't happen we'll figure it out wow i i mean just even just even know that this is possible is i don't know for me so inspiring and i've just like learned about this recently and to think that it's like like i said where i'm where my family is and i've always kind of thought oh should i be going back to alberta i'm like oh i'm not sure but like i'm not gonna lie like this just inspires me to want to move back and to like figure out how to i don't know just <laughs> just embrace freedom you know it's like uh and then do it in a way where you're around people that are the same way and um and you're seeing a lot of the things that are happening i think across canada too it's just i don't know not a big fan <laughs> um yeah. okay so so in terms of the wild rose party was there anything else you wanted to share um yeah was there anything else like in terms of i don't know like was there like a twitter handle i think it's, is it also wild rose party um, I think, well, most of us just direct everybody to our interim leader, Paul Hinman. So follow okay, him. Okay, I'm following him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to see what he's saying. On Twitter, um, follow him on Facebook. Most of us are, are on Facebook. Um, I, don't do, I don't do Twitter very well. Uh, I was on LinkedIn until they booted me off for pointing out that Alberta is the first province to uh, imprison pastors for holding church. They didn't like that. So hopefully I get out of LinkedIn. Is that what happened? Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, yeah. But didn't something like that happen in, was it in BC? No, it was in Alberta. It was here. It was here. We thought that it was actually going to be Manitoba first, but um, no, it was here. Mm. And he's still there. He's still, it's been a week and he's still there. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they wouldn't let him out because he refused to comply with his bail conditions, which were that he would not hold church. And he said, I'm a pastor. That's my job is to shepherd my people. And they said, okay, locked him back up and left him there until he decides to change his mind. Like this is, this is why one of the ones, it's kind of the icing on the cake. This is stuff that Albertans just are not cool with. And on Saturday, I actually went to the rally that was held for him outside of the prison that he's at, outside of the remand center. And there were hundreds of people there. And it was like very quickly put together. I think that it was like less than 48 hours that they decided to just do this. And when I was talking to the organizers, they were overwhelmed. They thought maybe 50 people, maybe. And there was literally hundreds that showed up outside the prison walls and um chanting like it was like let him go let free pastor james free pastor. it was just wild it was wild and that's that's what's going on in our province and that's the stuff that has to stop yeah people i mean people have a tipping point you know and so oh that just breaks my heart yeah um wow 
Oh, yes. Okay. So go freedom. You know, that's just super, super sad. Um, and yeah, I mean, hmm, this whole thing is, is really just terrible. You know, everything, everything just going on right now is just too much. Well, it is. And even this whole COVID stuff, you know, whether you believe in it or not, um, I don't, just for the record. I mean, mm. I'm not saying people aren't getting sick. They're getting sick. I just don't believe all the hype that mm. Pam and for us, it's Hinshaw want to put around it and all the rest. And I, I think they're going to get caught up in their lives here right away. But even that, you know, at the beginning, if we go back to, to almost a year ago when the whole thing started, if we had been our own nation then, we could have made the decision to close our borders and say, you know what? We don't know what this is out there. We know we can't really trust much that comes out of China. So since that, you know, we don't know anything, we're closing our borders. Alberta, no nothing in nothing out just until we can get our own experts to figure this out and and we would have been fine but because we're within this nation where at that time it was considered to be racist if we closed our borders then here we are and now like it's at the tail end of everything the numbers are down left right and center but because of ottawa we're still under this oppression of all kinds of, of uh, restrictions that honestly no province, no province should be succumbed to. But we're not allowed to make our own decisions, even though healthcare is a provincial jurisdiction. It's provincial. But in this case, Trudeau and Tam have other ideas. So, I mean, really, I think every province should just become its own nation because <laughs> then they can all be free. Our government's so broken. Like they've just, they've forgotten, or maybe they never ever cared, but government is not supposed to rule the people. That was never the intention of it. It's the other way around. The people rule the government. People, like government should be there to serve. And that's, that's the one thing about the people involved with the Wild Rose Party. We are so anti-establishment. Just so anti-establishment, small government, keep it in check, keep those checks and balances there, make sure that nobody's getting way too much power. Um, I mean, one of the things, just, just me personally, as an example, if, if I'm allowed to have anything to do with any kind of a constitution with our new, with our new country that we have, I would wanna see implemented in there that any elected official only gets eight years. That's it, you've got eight years to get in there and get done what you wanna do and then you're out. And the reason for that is because you are now going to make sure you make decisions that are going to benefit you after that eight years. Cause you're gonna to have to live by your decisions and you're gonna to have to live by your votes. You're not gonna stay a career politician until you're 65 and then live off some fat cat pension. Like just to make sure that people's hearts are in the right place and that they're there to serve the people, not the people serve them. This is not a monarchy, it's a government, and it needs to be set right. And then everybody, it'll be better for everybody. Alberta's love guns, right? And I think there's a lot of talk right now about, um, you know, about, about infringing on, on gun rights. And, and it's funny because like a lot of what makes America, you know, great <laughs> um, is kind of like, like you said, Alberta. And it's because of that, that, that migration, I think of, of, yeah, I guess was it like farmers and like just pioneers, right? Probably that just made their way up. Uh, um, so so, and a lot of people don't know that, but yeah, but but freedom is 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 Alberta. Um, okay, so and, and again, like you know, the reason I don't like the politics stuff is because it's like it's just it just it feels like it's it's never gonna go anywhere. You know what I mean? Like most of it, so I don't even concern myself with it. But when I when I heard about you know what what you guys were doing, I was like. Oh, this interesting because these people are kind of like after the same thing that the bitcoiners love which is ultimately is freedom and you know we, we think we, there's more of it should exist and like i was telling you is upstream data is one of my favorite companies right now and they are killing it right now and 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 they will become a ginormous company if not one of the biggest companies in alberta and they're doing it by actually making oil and gas green and they're using bitcoin to do it it's insane um okay so oops what what, what is so i was going to ask you kind of like my third question you know is, uh is which is 
what is one thing that you believe to be true that most others would disagree with you on? Um, yeah. Hmm. What do I believe to be true that most others would disagree with me on? Well, I guess just the Wild Rose Party in itself is probably, uh, at least in Alberta, amongst people I know would be uh, that. But uh, but curious if there might be something else um, regarding, I don't know, anything. I think probably that. Yeah, like there is. Um, now, within Alberta, like I said, that independent movement is growing. Like it's, it is growing exponentially and it's growing every day. So, so that part... Yeah, it's it, it's it's getting a little bit easier for people to wrap their heads around the idea of us being independent. But I think if we if we were to expand that across the country, what do I believe that others don't or would disagree with or kind of think that I'm crazy for thinking it is the concept of Alberta being its own nation. Yeah, yeah. It, it, <laughs> it's the wildest thing I've I've come across in the last, and I, I didn't know about this, and I'm from there. So imagine, like, I, I'm sure the a world is not really aware of it, but I, I'm even curious to know if people within Alberta, at least within the people that I know, I don't think they are. But I think if you could break it down, like the way we just did, people would at least be curious, and they'd ask more questions. Hey, I have a question for you. So speaking of freedom... Mm -hmm. Right. Um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, one of the instruments of control. Oh, wait, that wasn't very subtle uh, is money. <laughs> so so in a in a free loving world, um, how does one uh, think about money from first principles? Is it going back to the gold standard? Is it now putting you know, your face on the dollar bill? I mean, how, how are people in the party thinking about money? Um, well, a lot of that we don't have figured out yet because that's one of the questions, right? What currency are we going to use when we become our own nation? Will we stay on the Canadian dollar? Most people are not happy with that idea. Or do we go to the American dollar? Well, most people are not happy with that idea. Or do we go back to the gold standard? Do we um, go back to a resource-based currency? that you can't just print, you know, there's no more quantitative easing. Like you either have it or you don't, that's it, that's all. And, and that does seem to be the, the growing consensus that it would be, that, that it would be backed by something much more substantial than the thin air that, that our dollar is right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, so uh, again, um, it's a little bit like no it's not it's not it's pretty pretty good but but i keep i keep shilling my own interview which is pretty pretty sad like i mean but anyways but but the guy i interviewed yesterday it is so good but he he breaks it down and like when you really really get it it's kind of deep but when you really get it you realize that bitcoin is essentially connected to energy and it's like when you realize that that alberta is sitting on nothing but energy uh it's the guy you met yesterday mm. sounds to me now having never met him although i'm really curious to now yeah. i'd love to sit down and have coffee red deer red deer i think he's in or somewhere near there yeah there's oh. a guy named steve he runs a company called upstream data and it's literally my favorite company right now and it has okay. been for quite some time i'm gonna um, have to find and he's a he's genius fine. this guy is steven barber i think his late name is he okay. is insane i didn't even interview him i interviewed a guy that he hired um, I'm working my way up to Steve, but uh, okay. but they are out there. They're operational, and he would be a great guy for for um, I don't know, just like I think consulting on this project. Yeah. Sorry, he's a perfect example of an Albertan, and and how we think and what we do. Like he saw this opportunity, he took what he knew, he saw this thing over here. Okay, how am I going to pull this together to make something really amazing out of it? And to, I mean, they're doing great as a company, which means they're going to be able to, to feed into the rest of Alberta in more, way, more ways than one. They're going to be able to provide jobs. They're going to be able to provide more infrastructure. They're going to be able to provide more services, to, you know, which just feeds back into the economy that betters everybody. That's all we want to do. Exactly. Yeah. He figured out how. He thought outside the box. How can I marry these two ideas together? And he did it. And he, uh -huh. and he deserves to keep the fruits of his labor, you know, and uh, so he can create more jobs. And then so I think the fact that it always confused me that Alberta never had a, a tax, you know, um, 
but then like like i said it's kind of like that uh the sixth sense movie you know at the end where like it all comes together <laughs> so more recently i was like oh my goodness like alberta is actually this this amazing amazing place that i never realized had such a rich history and um and yeah and this like affinity and that kind of explains why maybe i've been so obsessed with this idea of freedom as well <laughs> um so okay well this has been wonderful I, I this has been a lot of fun um i think i think we've covered most of like i don't know just kind of my initial questions if there's anything else in terms of websites twitter handles anything else you want to share we can share it now if not uh yeah i can bring this one to an end and like i said uh this has been amazing i really really enjoyed it awesome it was a pleasure thank you thank you kathy just stick around for 10 seconds i'm going to kill the video here